What's going, what's going on guys? Fish here from Reignite TV and welcome to the next video in my weekly teaching series. This week I want to talk about how Jesus brings stuff back to life and the way I'm going to do that is by going over the story of Lazarus. Now most of us know it but I kind of want to go into a little bit more detail in the five or so minutes that I have to do this. Uh, so we're going to start at the beginning, John 11 if you want to follow along. So basically there's Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Now we met Mary and Martha before because like, they're the ones that Jesus stayed in their house with. And uh, one of them was just working the whole time. And one of them was just spending time with Jesus. This is one of the few characters that we actually see repeat in the gospel. In the same um, in the same book. They're both up here in John. That actually mentions it as well. But this is where we actually learn that they have a brother, Lazarus. So in verse 4, um, it actually says Lazarus is sick. Uh, so when the messenger that Mary and Martha send goes, g goes to Jesus... Jesus says his sickness will not end in death, but that God will get the glory. And so the son of God will receive all the glory from this as well. So Jesus stays in the town where he is for two more days. Now, two days later, again, he travels to the town of Bethany, uh, which is just outside of uh, Jerusalem where they were. I believe it was a uh, two, two day trip or something like that. Um, so when actually... Uh, Jesus is in, Jesus in Bethany. He finds out that Lazarus has been dead for four days already. Uh, Martha's the first one that goes to meet Jesus um, in Bethany. Basically, she says, "Why didn't you come, God, Lord? I mean, if you came sooner, my brother would still be alive." Now, how many times have we said that to God? You know, God, why didn't you come? You know, if you came now, you know, I wouldn't have this kind of trouble. You know, I wouldn't be in this financial situation, or I wouldn't be in this emotional distress, or anything like that. Um, but Jesus basically, um, his response is to tell her the outcome of what he's going to do. He basically says he's going to raise Lazarus from the dead. I mean, that's very rare. Jesus or God in general doesn't even say what he's going to do most of the time. Most of the time we have to just go out in faith and just expect God to do something amazing. But in this case, he actually says, I'm going to bring him back from the dead. Now for his, Martha didn't really believe that she thought he was talking about the resurrection at the end of times. But Jesus is like, no, I'm going to bring him back from the dead because I am the li I'm the life, basically. I can bring stuff back from the dead. You know, that's awesome. And that's kind of what I want to get at is how Jesus can bring all of our circumstances back from the dead. You know, as hopeless as our, many of our situations seem, Jesus can bring it back from the, can bring it back from the dead. Now going on, Martha tells Mary that Jesus is here um, in Bethany. So at that point, Mary goes out to Jesus, who's in Bethany still, and says the exact same thing her sister does. You know, God, why didn't you come sooner? If you came sooner, Lazarus would still be alive. Jesus says the same thing again. I, you can see a pattern here, right? They're not really trusting Jesus that he's going to do what he came to do. So after this... Jesus goes, finally gets to the tomb where Lazarus is. And here's the shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. Just think about that for a second. Jesus, who is all man and all God, is weeping because his friend's dead. Now, you know, we as humans do that as well when we lose a loved one. But Jesus, yes, he's all man, but he's also all God as well. And he's weeping because his friend died. That just shows you how much he loves, or he loved Lazarus, and how much he loves us as well. You know, when we're spiritually dead, or maybe our circumstances, our circumstances are spiritually dead, he's weeping for us because he loves us. How cool is that? That is awesome. So the end of the story, Jesus goes to the tomb, brings him back to life. And everyone's just like, whoa, how did he do that? He brought this guy who was dead for four days back to life. He was dead longer than Jesus was. I mean, so not really, but in theory, quote unquote, this is actually a greater miracle than when Jesus came back from the dead himself. In terms of time, obviously it wasn't because Jesus died for our sins. And so we could be righteous in front of God. But he was dead. Lazarus was dead longer than Jesus and still brought him back to life. So the point I want to make in this video as I'm closing is that Jesus let Lazarus die. Why? Because he would get even more glory if he brought Lazarus back to life than if Jesus just healed him right there. Be like, 
He could have easily just been like, oh, boom, um, magic uh, flick of the fingers, Lazarus is all well. And he did that a lot of times, uh, especially with the Roman soldier who said his daughter was sick and dying. Um, Jesus said, well, she's better now. And he comes back and voila, she's in perfectly fine health. Um, but in this case, he let Lazarus die. You know, not not because Lazarus did anything wrong, but because God gets all the glory from it. And before you say, oh, well, that doesn't seem very right. Why would he let his friend die? I mean, think about it in our lives, too. How much we can really see how awesome God is. You know, if or imagine how Lazarus felt in this case. You know, he was dead for four days. And then all of a sudden, he's just like, whoa, I'm alive again. You know, there's no way, there's no other explanation than God in that, in that situation. And that's what God wants. He wants to prove all the naysayers wrong. He doesn't want any doubt that it was him who did the work in this. You know, if, even if Lazarus was dead for, you know, a few minutes, doctors have brought people back to life in a few minutes, but you don't see anyone come back from the dead after four days. That's just incredible. And it's just something that we can just look at and just say, praise God that he's working in our lives. So the last part I want to talk about is any situation you're going through, whether it be relationships or finance or emotions or whatever, um, I want to say stop trying to keep it alive. Um, and that sounds kind of harsh, um, but basically we can keep stuff alive. We can keep all of our dreams and hopes alive, but when we do, it's basically on life support. It's so sickly that it's actually hindering us more than if it was just dead. So I'm saying let it die. I'm not saying forget about it, and I'm not saying give up on it, but stop trying so hard to keep it alive. Because that's Jesus' job, not ours. If we let Jesus do his job and let us do our job, which is to pursue Jesus even more, just imagine how awesome our lives will be if we just do that. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, I hope this blessed you. I know when I was writing this, this really blessed me as well. Um, if you have any comments, just leave them in the comment section below. Be sure to share this video with your friends and subscribe. Uh, new videos every Friday. I'll see you guys next week.